cameras. How do they work? In the year 1021, the camera obscura was in. Whoa, 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 that's a little too far back. We are going to start with the SLR, the point and shoot, the DSLR, and the mirrorless cameras. Let's start in the film era with the SLR and the point and shoot. Now, the SLR, this stands for single lens reflex. A mirror blocks the film at the end of the lens and bounces the light up into your eye, allowing you to see what the lens is seeing. When you're ready to press the shutter and snap a picture, the mirror lifts and a fabric curtain moves to expose the film to the light, capturing what you see. Let's take a closer look. Here's the body of an SLR. Up here is the whole lens system. Then we've got a mirror, the shutter, the film, and the pentaprism or pentamere. So light enters the lens where different planes of glass condense and focus the light. Then it heads to a mirror that is angled so the light gets bounced up and enters the pentaprism where that light gets bounced around and lined up with your eye. When you press the shutter, the mirror lifts, the shutter curtain slides open, allowing that light to hit the light sensitive film. So here is an SLR camera without the lens so that we can see all of the mechanisms on the inside. I changed the settings to be pretty slow and then I slowed this video down as well so that we can really see. So from the front view, you can see that mirror lift. And then from the back view, you can see that shutter curtain slide open. Which brings us to the point and shoot camera. Now the point and shoot camera used film the same way that the SLR did, but it didn't have the same mirror shutter lens system. Rather than light travel down the lens, hit a mirror, bounce up to your eye, these cameras had a viewfinder that saw through the body of the camera, not through the lens. So this means that the eye and the lens are not seen from the same angle. There's a tiny discrepancy between the two that goes unnoticed almost all of the time. Let's take a closer look. Here's a point and shoot body with the lens system in the front, a shutter, the film area, and up here is a viewfinder. So light enters the lens where different planes of glass condense and focus the light. And when you press the shutter, a shutter curtain slides open, allowing light to hit the light sensitive film. So notice how there's no mirror to bounce light from the lens up to your eye. The viewfinder is separate, causing that slight angle difference between the eye and the lens. So when will you notice this discrepancy? You might never notice it, but close-up photos make the discrepancy a little bit more noticeable. Whereas shooting things from a distance makes it even more unnoticeable. Film. So here's something that most of us don't use anymore, but the technology behind film is actually super cool. So what film involves is a canister, which is totally light proof, the light sensitive film, which is plastic, gelatin emulsion, and silver, and these perforations, sometimes called sprocket holes. So starting with the canister, this canister keeps the film wound neatly in the camera and then winds it back up when you've taken all the photos. It's totally light proof to protect your images. And now all you have to do is go and get your film developed. The light sensitive film is on the inside. It's a thin plastic strip with a gelatin emulsion on one side. And that emulsion has microscopic bits of a light sensitive silver in it. So the characteristics of the silver determine the ISO or speed of the film. So the more or the bigger the silver, the more light sensitive it is, meaning that it needs less light to see. This means it's faster and will have a higher ISO or a higher number. A possible downside to this is grain. So the more silver the film has, the grainier it is leading to noisy prints. And the perforations, so these perforations are how the film moves inside the camera. There's a sprocket-like gear wheel that grips these holes and pushes and pulls the film along. On an SLR, we've got the door, the button, and the crank. If you want to open the door and load your film, 
you lift the button and then you give it an extra little pull up. There's a tiny bit of give there and it releases the mechanism and the door will just pop right open. And this is what the back of them looks like. So up here, you've got the shutter. This is where the film canister is stored. These are the sprockets that push and pull the film. The used film gets wound around right here for storage. And then these two doors either help guide the film or close the camera, keeping it light proof. After each photo, you have to wind the film to get the new unexposed film lined up with the shutter. It doesn't do it automatically. So when you turn the crank, what's happening is those sprockets turn, pulling the film out of the canister and winding the used film up around into the body of the camera. When you want to wind the film back up again, you can pull this little handle out of that top button and just manually spin and crank it all back into your light proof canister. Alrighty, now for the digital age, we're going to look at the DSLR and the mirrorless cameras. And starting with the DSLR, the most popular camera right now, what this stands for is digital single lens reflex. So it works the same as the SLR, but it has sensors instead of film. So to take a closer look at how these cameras work, we've got our lens system at the front, the mirror, the shutter, the light sensors, and the pentaprism or pentamere. Light enters that lens where different planes of glass condense and focus the light, heads to a mirror that is angled so that light bounces up and enters the pentaprism where that light gets bounced around and lined up with your eye. When you press the shutter, the mirror lifts and a shutter curtain slides open, allowing light to hit the sensor. So unlike film where the light gets recorded, the sensor turns the light into pixels. But what exactly is a pixel? Pixel is short for picture element. They are tiny squares of color that make an image when all grouped together. And one million pixels is a megapixel. So if one megapixel is one million pixels or one million squares, then an eight megapixel camera has 8 million squares of information. So if each pixel is a tiny bit of information, simply put, the more information, the better. If there isn't enough information in a digital image, or if it's enlarged too far, our eyes start to notice the jagged edges of the pixels, making a blocky or a low res image. And we have all seen this kind of image. And then the mirrorless cameras. So mirrorless cameras don't have a mirror that bounces light up to your eye, nor does it have a viewfinder that goes through the body of the camera. There's a sensor that sends what the lens is seeing up to the digital viewfinder so you can see what the lens sees, but you don't need a mirror. And then it has a digital sensor, just like the DSLR that records the light, turns them into pixels, and you're ready to go. Let's take a closer look. We've got the lens, got a shutter, we've got the sensors, and then up here is the digital viewfinder. Light will enter the lens where different planes of glass condense and focus the light. And when you press that shutter, the shutter curtain opens, allowing light to hit the sensor. But how does the digital viewfinder see? Well, there is another small sensor that looks down the lens and sends that information up to the viewfinder. This sensor takes camera settings and lens settings into account so that the photographer knows if the settings are what they're wanting. So let's compare the SLR and the DSLR. Film allows more detail. Well, now the DSLR and megapixels have caught up, so it doesn't really matter anymore. Film is not reusable. It needs chemicals and specialty rooms to develop but you can usually develop larger prints without losing a lot of detail. DSLR, you can take more shots with an instant preview. There are faster shutter speeds and higher ISO settings, and some have LCD screens and Wi-Fi ability. But print size depends on the megapixel of the DSLR body model. So let's compare the DSLR to the mirrorless. The so DSLRs have better autofocus capabilities. They're way better in low light. There's more lenses and accessories because they've been around longer and they have a longer battery life. 
The mirrorless is much more lightweight, has a shorter battery life due to the digital viewfinder sensor that's always sending information, but it's better for filming, it can shoot faster, and it has better image stabilization. It is, however, much more expensive. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you learned something, and as always, happy picture taking.